Today's lesson uh, is lecture number 11, which deals with the Warsaw Ghetto. Of course, it's almost impossible to uh, cover the entire Warsaw Ghetto in a 10-minute YouTube lecture, but what I'm going to do is just give an overall uh, as uh, we embark on our study of the Warsaw Ghetto. At the outbreak of the Second World War, there were 380,000 Jews in Warsaw, which is, by the way, the capital of Poland. About a third of the population of the city. It was the biggest Jewish population of any community in Europe. The German army entered Warsaw on the 28th of September 1939 after a three-week siege of the country of Poland uh, and rage, uh, ravaging and destroying everything in its sight. Destroyed large sections of the city and immediately upon the Nazis entering, the Germans began persecuting and in a large scale uh, maltreated the Jews with very severe laws that were passed to deprive the Jews basically of all of their civil rights and human rights. On the 15th of November 1940, after several months of preparation, the ghetto that the Germans set up on the northern part of uh, Warsaw was uh, sealed off. The 400,000 Jews of Warsaw were now squeezed into an area some four kilometers in uh, four square kilometers in size, representing in all about 2.4% of the area of the entire city of Warsaw. Refugees from other cities were there as well. And in the first half of the year 1941, another 86,500 Jews from towns in the district of Warsaw were transferred into the ghetto. Thus, at one point, there were almost a half a million souls within the Warsaw ghetto. The German authorities deliberately created conditions for mass mortality, from starvation by means of drastic uh, re restrictions of, of food intake and supplies for the uh, residents of the ghetto, and also as a result of the epidemics uh, that developed because of the uh, uh, intolerable sanitary conditions that were present. Uh, you, know, you have 120,000 people to each square kilometer. Sanitary conditions are very hard to maintain. Some 85,000 people in all died of what we might call natural deaths in the ghetto from hunger and disease. Uh, the, I say what we might call natural deaths because these were really induced by the conditions that the Nazis brought on. Some 20,000 of them were children. In three summer months alone, July, August, and September of the 19, uh, 1941, 15,655 persons died of hunger and illness. 1,800 of them were children. 100 to 150 people died every single day. And so you can start to see the magnitude of the problem here uh, that we're talking about. The Jews in the ghetto made tremendous efforts to protect themselves, of course, by organizing mutual aid societies in secret, uh, medical services to help each other, uh, smuggling food in, setting up uh, institutions to care for orphans, and many other uh, such actions, even, those, even though they were prohibited. These efforts brought only slight relief to the conditions. The worst was still to come uh, as time moved on. If you took a look in the streets of Warsaw, you would not have believed what you would have seen. In November of 1940, Jewish Warsaw had changed for the worse. It was a graveyard. Only the only comparison that could validly be made. Here, it seemed like skeletons, walking skeletons, were roaming the streets. They gathered from all parts of the country to come to Warsaw. They came empty-handed, broken, crushed, without a penny, without food for a single meal or clothes to cover their naked bodies. On November 5th, 1940, the following was written uh, in the diary of Chaim A. Kaplan. The sidewalks are crowded beyond belief. Most of all, mothers take up positions on the sidewalks with their children's cradles, and they lean against the sides of the buildings along the street. The conquerors have closed the city parks to us. 
anywhere that a tree has been planted or a bench has been placed. Jewish children are forbidden to derive any enjoyment. It hurts you to see the hardships of our little children. Children who have never known what it is to sin are forced by order of their cruel conquerors to stay outside while children their age are romping in a half-empty park. Everywhere you turn, there are lamed, crippled, blind people, people missing an arm or a leg. Poverty was everywhere. Beggars roamed the streets. Again, to quote from Chaim Kaplan's Warsaw Diary in November of 1940, the inescapable beggars and paupers have gathered in Warsaw from all parts of the country, and they are types that the like of which you have never seen before. By the thousands, they beg for food and sustenance in the streets of the Jewish quarter. They surround you and tug at your sleeve when you turn. There is no ordinary begging going on here. At one intersection, you encounter a group of children of poverty, ranging from ages 4 to 10. They sing, and their voices are pleasant, and their songs permeated with Jewish sorrow and grief. The music touches your heartstrings. Little groups of idlers and strollers stand near the childish quartet, their eyes filled with tears. They find it hard to leave. At infrequent intervals, someone turns up who drops a miserable penny into the hands of the little singers. May the philanthropist be blessed. The beggars are the plague of the streets. Many of them are professionals and children crying monotonously, making it difficult for anybody to work. To curb this, the order service, the Jewish police, put teams on guard. Yesterday afternoon, I saw how a patrolman got the beggars away from my window in the simplest imaginable way, by giving them a little money. No policeman of any other people will conceivably act like this. People were being forced to wear the yellow star. Elderly women with a little table were selling armbands at various locations. The cheapest ones were made of paper with a printed star of David on it. The most expensive were made of linen and hand embroidered stars of David and rubber bands. These armbands are very much in demand in the ghetto because the Germans are very, very sensitive on this score. When they notice a Jew wearing a crumpled or dirty armband, they beat him at once. The number of street vendors in the ghetto has grown tremendously. There is no avoiding them and their goods. Their cries are deafening and everywhere you go one follows you like a shadow. What sort of goods are sold in the ghetto? Anything from pieces of sugar that have been through the wars to postcards and stamps, which are not obtainable either in the stores because there is no profit in them. And last but not least, we get to the children. I shouldn't say last but not least, because there's so many other things that we need to deal with, but we're going to take a look at children in the next lecture, because they really deserve a little extra time of their own lecture-wise, I think. So we'll end here and pick it up with the children in lecture number 12. Thank you.